Hey guys, my name is Simsy. how you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Rome 2 here today on the channel. I felt like starting a brand new DEI sub-modded series. We're going to be playing as Rhodes, a faction I've never played before on DEI, so it's going to be incredibly exciting. So, if you like the sound of DEI back on the channel, want to see more of it in the future, make sure to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. So Rhodes are situated in a really interesting position, obviously, on an island. We've got the Colossus. We've got a really good strategic port. We have a very strong focus on naval warfare. We've got some really good stats for that. Also, we boast some of the best slingers in the entire world world but we're incredibly surrounded we're really quite small and i can't wait to see how we do i want to try and forge a maritime empire the main objective of this series is to sort of i think we should form a greek slash aegean empire i want to bring all of greece i want to bring sort of those border territories in turkey i want to try and control the bosphorus and then depending if you guys want to see more episodes we maybe could advance into egypt into rome or potentially the seleucid empire um but that's up to you guys. So, without further ado, let's get stuck into the Rhodes campaign. You are Rhodes. Our great city-state has developed into a famous hub of commercial and naval power. Our navy is unmatched by any of the Greek states, and our economic power spans the Mediterranean. Perhaps with this maritime power as a foundation, we can push our control into the Hellenic world. Given time, our influence could span the known world. Yeah, if we can get trade going, we might actually be able to have like a huge a trade economy. However, we are in a bit of a tricky situation, because although we're an island, um, we are a little bit exposed from multiple vectors of attack. First of all, we're going to need a strong navy to protect it. If we do get roads actually blocked by a fleet, our trade is going to go to absolute zero. And we've also got a lot of trade lanes we're going to need to protect as well. We also could get attacked by Crete. There's Spartans. There's Athenians. There's Egyptians, Seleucids. There's even, like, um, I think it's Lydia in Asia Minor there. So we're currently under the reign of Cosmas. Um, okay, so we're currently in charge as well. There's, uh, there's some various other political divisions here. So the other parties, landowners, the merchant oligarchs. Okay, we might need to sanction them if we're not careful. And we've got to keep an eye on those damn populists as well. So we do get a plus 5% research rate, which is really great. That's the Greek knowledge trait. Uh, we also have a classic heritage as well. So hmm, I've got to make a decision. Uh, do we push into Asia Minor? We can push into Crete, Pergamon. There's a fair few directions we can go in. But if I can get all of Greece and sort of those coastal Greek territories, I I'll be really quite happy. But that like conquering and doing all that as roads, as not a major faction, is going to be easier said than done. Our badge looks really quite cool as well. All right, but there is the Colossus of Rhodes. I guess we start with diplomacy, and we might have to actually play some of the Greek city-states off each other. So, unfortunately, Lady Oris are a puppet of the Seleucid, so attacking them will bring them in. Uh, we could go against Pergamon. Maybe Crete might be better. Because they often quite go to war with the Spartans because they're quite closer. And we can probably secure most of our province. And then we've got the Athenians to deal with as well. Sometimes they ally or pop it up with the, um, the Macedonians. So we'll negotiate with Egypt, I think. Okay, hang on. Trade and non-aggression. Okay, we'll get that done. That's going to be huge. Military alliance. <gasps> Wait, what? They want a defensive pact with us. Oh, this could be huge. It's not that much either. Well, we'll accept that then. Yeah. They do get um, attacked quite a bit though sometimes. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit shocked by this because this is actually a huge play. Um, having them as a defensive alliance, that's going to increase our balance of power and our strength against other factions. We actually might not get like rushed and attacked so much because we're going to have the backing of the... Egyptian Empire. However, this could come and backfire in our face. There is no, there are risks about this because, yeah, Egypt does get attacked quite a bit. They can get attacked by Carthage, uh, maybe even the Seleucids. 
uh, as well. So if we can get that to a military, that would be awesome. But yeah, it looks like the Egyptians are going to back Rhodes' conquest of the Hellenic world. Like if we can become the, the major power in the Aegean, bring Hellas under our control, um, the Egyptians are going to be essentially rewarded from that. Oh, and we also do border them there in Asia Minor as well. Interesting. It's a shame we can't actually um, confederate with the Egyptians, even though technically the monarchy at this time would be more aligned to the Greeks, being Macedonian. Because like we can, I'm pretty sure we can um, ally with the Macedonians if we want. Uh, anyway, I want to go down philosophy. I want to go for legal institutions to get that tax rate and loyalty bonus for the other political factions is huge along with the focus there as well. And the minus three empire maintenance. So I usually just go straight to that early on. Um, playing as the Romans or a Hellenic faction, they're already quite strong militarily. Like, we've actually got a really decent army roster for such a small nation. I'm actually surprised I've never played as Rhodes before because they're quite cool. We're going to upgrade Rhodes just to increase our garrison capacity. Uh, we do have the Port of Rhodes, the Musterfield, and we've also got the Colossus here. So we are going to be lacking on the food for front quite a bit. We're going to have to get fishing stuff in. We're also going to have to secure farmland as well. So we're in the province of Asia. We have two factions, uh, like Lydia actually holds two settlements, which are backed by the Seleucids. And then we've got Pergamon there as well. I think we'll get a spy in as well. Having intelligence uh, where the enemy forces are is quite crucial. And I will get a noble woman as well, because once you can, you, the earlier you can get them, the better, because um, you can really start to grow your administration capacity. We could very well actually move our capital if we need to as well. Like, if we need to move it to Pergamon, that's more strategically um, sound. We could do that. Or maybe we could move it to potentially um, Pella in Macedonia. Or we could even move it to Athens. It does cost a bit, but that actually might be the play in the future trying to centralize our power. Uh, we currently are just... We don't really have full control over the, the court. It's about a 50-50. Um, I think we do need a navy, though. Um, yeah, so we'll do that. We'll, we'll get a navy in. Because that really does help out in order resolves and battles and stuff. So, we've got a fair amount of money. Obviously, in DUI, you start with quite a bit. Uh, you meant to actually spend a lot of it for trade and negotiations. But here we go. Here are the road hoplites that I was talking about. They're actually quite good. Um, we're going to get a bunch of those in. We've also got some Rhodian citizen cavalry as well. But at the moment, our manpower is quite low because we're on a, such a small island. So we will need to try and secure more territory. But yeah, I'm just looking now. We want to build up a pretty decent army before we march on. But I actually don't think we... Like, you think... Because we are so close, I think we go after... Um, we go into Asia Minor. But nah, the problem is with the Seleucids, man. Like, they could just steamroll us with el elephants. Like, I think unless a war breaks between Athens and Sparta, we could go for them. I think we might make a play for Crete. I think that's where we go. I think we go to Knossos. Um, and we'll get that spy in as well. Okay, so let's uh, end the turn and continue. I think I'm quite happy where we are. And let's see if we get drawn into a war instantly. <laughs> With the Egyptians backing us. Yeah, it's interesting that they wanted to do that. The Seleucids weren't interested. We obviously don't have Carthage or Rome near us. But yeah, having them as a defensive military ally. Egypt is guaranteeing the independence of Rhodes. If Rhodes gets attacked, Egypt will be called in. Well, they will have a choice, but you would imagine that they would stand and fight alongside with us. So let's move my spy down to Crete. And they are currently building an army here as well. So they are technically in the region of Hellas, which... Sparta and Athens occupy. We actually don't want them to build up too much. So we might actually have to leave. We'll just activate my noble woman there. Because sometimes in DEI, the AI is so effective in actually recruiting and building armies. We might need to rush them. Like in my Spartan series, we did have to rush Athens pretty early on and vice versa. We can't upgrade that to a military. No, they're not interested, unfortunately. Uh, trade... 
There are still some factions we can get trade with. The Seleucids don't want a defensive pact. There's no point in getting a, tr a trade agreement with Nosos, the Cretans, um, just yet because we're going to attack them. So there's no point in doing that. So we've got seven units there, which is deceiving. I guess they got more on the way. Uh, we just need to get over there. We can get some mercenaries this turn. The quicker we get there, the easier this battle is going to be for us. And also in DEI, there's no force march. I wish there was a force march mod, to be honest. Is there? I don't even know. That'd be awesome, because I just like being able to traverse the gnome world just so much quicker. But I guess it makes it realistic. But it's been a while since I've played DEI, and I am open to doing more series. Uh, I've got a couple of factions I still haven't played as as well. We haven't played as Armenia. That might be quite cool. Potentially even Pergamon, but that might be too similar to this Rhodes campaign because we're starting in the similar area. And we've also got uh, the Crimea Chimeria, the Hellenic Greek uh, colony up there, which would be quite cool because we've got like Tartars and, and other... Factions up there battling it out. The Ruskies aren't up there just yet. But um, not for another thousand years or so. <laughs> Alright. So. Just going through the end turn phase here. Good. No one's attacked us or we've been rushed early on. Uh, Rhodes seems to fight for their independence quite fiercely. In DI, from what I've noticed. I've never seen them sort of grow out to be a big empire, though. Okay. Um, we'll move my spy in, just to hamper their logistics. I think we can get some mercenaries. Actually, we can actually recruit in this area. We are trespassing. They've got 13 in there, now 10 out. So... Do we want more... Ships, or do we want more military? We can't actually get any on the island, so we're going to have to go with some Rhodes Marines, essentially. Yeah, I don't know what I'm asking. I guess they don't want a military. Because we're going to be so hyper-aggressive calling them in constantly. <laughs> Maybe they know that. I guess, I've, like, role-playing-wise, we've told the Egyptians our plan of conquering, and they're like, yeah, we like the sound of that, so we're going to support you with trade, and Hellenic weapons, I guess. Just like funneling us to be able to conquer distant lands. So there is a pretty strong fish resource in Crete, so we're going to be able to get that. The more trade resources we can capture, the better. So then we can get our trade flowing, because trade in DEI is just so huge. We might even at some point... Uh, recruit a navy just to go out and, and sail and find new lands and get some merchant trade going. Okay, well, that's not good. We didn't get the RNG. Our spy just got smashed there. So, they're not at war with anyone, Nosos. So, we'll declare war upon Crete. And we'll block the port. Which should hamper them. So, they've got quite a decent army there. Thankfully, they haven't built up too much. And we'll move into a striking zone. We want to be out of range of the garrison. If we have to fight a land battle. So hopefully, we can at least delay them from recruiting more. We, if, if Hopefully, like the ship can continue to blockade. Because we might be able to whittle down some of the inhabitants inside. Like, get, just get the casualties going by uh, cutting off their food and trade. But, yeah, it's in the turn to continue. There's a couple ways that Nosos can react. I'm curious to see how they do. Fighting in a defensive siege will be the play. However, they've marched out against us. And we do slightly outnumber them. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, luckily we rushed them quite quickly. So, cavalry-wise, they probably we're probably drawing with them. They have their own hoplites. We've got three. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, this is going to be a real close one. All right, let's fight this one on the field. The Battle of Crete. Okay, not the best deployment, as they have a slight high ground advantage. So let's move everyone up. Uh, let's go into a phalanx formation. The formations in DEI are just so, so strong. You should really look at every single unit you got in your army, if they've got it. And deploying it can basically save you a battle. So we'll divide the cavalry up a bit. We've got a skirmish cav here. Let's chuck you on the far right. And we'll move our Rhodian citizen cavalry on the left with the general. And we'll try and get some uh, high-octane... 
cavalry charges in if we can. We're going to have to advance as well up this hill. But here are the brave men of Rhodes looking to conquer and bring the Hellenic world under their control. Check out these shields, man. They look so good. We are using DEI, of course, and I'm using a bunch of upgraded HD texture mods. I would recommend them. They're on the workshop. You can find them. Um, it's rather straightforward. I wouldn't recommend them unless you've got a really good PC, because they can throttle your game. But here is Cosmas, the leader of the Rhodes, Rhodian Republic. I guess that's what we are. All right, so another overcast, glim-looking day. Like, come on. This is the first episode of the Rhodes campaign. You want to have a nice, sunny, Mediterranean-style battle. You don't want it to be all wet, dark, and gloomy. Uh, to be fair, I think it happened in the Spartan campaign. It was another one like this. But you forget that, like, Greece gets super cold. I've never actually been there. In winter, but it's like, it snows, it goes a bit mad. It's been years now, though. Since I've been back there, but yeah, Athens. Awesome. But there's some real dodgy places, like, <laughs> I like, remember what we did. We, um, accidentally took a wrong, we're in this really nice, beautiful area, then we accidentally took a wrong turn down into the ghetto in the hood. <laughs> and there was just like, the main thing I took from it was, there was just dead cats everywhere. Like, I was, I was shocked. <laughs> I don't know why. It was just, they were just everywhere. But, um, yeah, I'm not making fun of people who live in, like, low socioeconomic places. Like, hell, I'm from Tasmania. Essentially the Alabama of fucking Australia. And I lived around crackheads and meth heads. But there was never dead cats everywhere. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> like, I don't know. Athenian Greek subscribers. What's with all the dead cats in Athens? I, it's been puzzling me to this day. Just, um, I was shocked by the amount of dead cats I saw. I don't know what it was. I have no idea. Like, yeah, I still do live around some just like rough areas and stuff. <laughs> dead cats? I don't see that too often. I don't know. Like Greek people, man, are so kind. They're so hospitable. But I don't know what's with the cats. Like, I love my time in Greece. <laughs> and I was there. They're starting to push up here now. Our right side is engaging. We're about to interlock here at the front. Alright, so they're advancing in a formation attack as well. So, if we can basically get them to lock into the anvil, they can swing around with a cavalry hammer if, we're help, if, we're, if we can. Okay. We're actually not favoured to win this one. That's actually more so in their favour. Hopefully we can pull out a result, because if we don't, this is make or break. <laughs> it's so risky going after Rhodes and a faction this early on, but you, you got to go. Like, they were going to basically build on up. The longer we wait, the bigger they're going to grow. And we actually do need to secure the resources here. But I'm happy to be back on Rome too. It's been a while since the Spartan campaign. Basically, going into March, April, and over the next couple of months in 2022, I want to start going back to at least going to every single Total War, getting the campaign going. I'm having a break from Warhammer 3 until Mortal Empires comes out, and I will do another campaign. But yeah, I'm sort of done with the Realm of Chaos campaign. Also, we're going to be wrapping up my Witcher 3 playthrough as well. Doing those in huge chunks in hour-long episodes is definitely the players. The long charge comes in here. We're doing well against the brave men of Nossos. You've got to give it to them. They're fighting for their homeland. They're fighting for their freedom, their liberty, and control of the island. And we want to bring them under Hellenic rule. We're trying to build a maritime empire here. And you guys will have to suffer because of it. But yeah. Um, wouldn't mind actually doing a couple Hearts of Iron 4 videos as well. So, so much content, so many games, so many series I want to do. But yeah, let me know feedback and suggestions if any sort of piques your fancy. I do have a general idea. I've got lists, man, I've said this before. I've got lists and lists of like um, campaigns I want to do. Like I literally got a Word document that says Rome 2 DEI and then I've got like those four factions I mentioned before that I would be interested in that I haven't played as before. 
I've been wanting to do this road series for quite a while. But um, I wouldn't mind going and playing the Great War mod. There's, there was a huge update that happened in J uh, December last year. So I've still yet to play that. Um, you guys really enjoyed my Napoleon and... My France, Napoleon, and Great Britain campaign. So I want to actually go back to that. Um, I wouldn't mind doing it. Another... Maybe coalition... Campaign. Um... All my players is Russia, but they're kind of the bad guys at the moment, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If we should play as the Ruskies anytime soon. Um. Uh, what else? Total War Attila. There's always... There was, we did an Age of Justinian campaign. At the moment, it does look like Nosos are capitulating, thankfully. Basically, what's won this, won this here is just the Hammer and Anvil strikes. And, yeah, unfortunately, we had to wrap up the RTR Imperium Spectrum campaign because we had to save Corruption. I am willing to do more Rome Remastered. It's just, um, the mods are unreliable. So maybe we have to do a pure vanilla campaign. We could do the Brutii at some point in the future as well. That's another one. But if we can get a couple of historical Total War campaigns running on the channel, that would be juicy. I think that's what I want to do for the next couple of months. Just playing. In my spare time. Also, we're doing online battles as well. Um, yeah, so what's the go with that? Sometimes it's a big investment for me to do, like, campaigns like this. Because I'm just so busy these days. Um, it takes a while to plan what I want to sort of do for, like, this road series where I want to go. DUI actually just takes longer to record, so I've, I've got some spare time now to record a full series with the objective of getting all the grease, and so if we can take like 10, 15 regions, if we can get like Greece, Asia Minor, and like the islands under our control, that'd be awesome. I think that's our like a short victory conditions hit, and then if you guys want to see a long campaign, we can definitely do it if you guys support it, like the Spartan campaign, that, that was a crazy amount of support, I really do. Thank you for all the feedback and suggestions on the channel as well. Um, like, that campaign did really well. It was, it was super enjoyable. You guys loved it. Um, so, it's pretty much the same book for this. If you guys enjoy it, we'll do more. If not, we'll move on to something else. Also, yeah, speaking of the Total War Online battles as well. Yeah, usually, um, I upload... I've, got, I've recorded a bunch of those. Like, they're super easy to record. There's always some really quite astute players as well. Like, seeing online gameplay and the comparison to the AI... Is really quite cool. There's a really lot of um, good and decent online replays submitted by a lot of online players, so they're actually quite enjoyable. They're also quite easy to record. I literally sit down for like 10 minutes and then that's a video done. So usually when I'm busy or I, I, I basically can't put a video out, I just I've got a bunch of those because they're super easy to do instead of sitting down for an hour or so and editing this out. This poor little Cretan trying to find his guts. Can't get up. Oh, no. Or he's just got a massive, massive lock. <laughs> They're not coming out. <laughs> he's blocked up. He needs to get back on the fish oil. I think that's what they used to use back in the day. Oh, as that guy gets kicked in the face. Olive oil. And fish oil. That's what I'm heard in ancient days. Who was that? There was that one Greek philosopher as well. That like was constantly in pain and misery. <laughs> it was like, it was it's, it's some quote. I can't, I can't remember who it was. Some guys like my entire life is suffering. He had like really bad problems. He, he was up like in a week, right? Five days of suffering, two good days. Like most of his life was suffering. He said. He was constantly in pain. I was like, you forget how good we got our lives here. Like this poor guy, poor. Poor guy just suffering in ancient Greece. Oh, he's always going on about his misery. i got to find that quote. I gotta, who was that? I can't remember that. Something in the back of my head. From, um, uni. Some random philosopher. Anyway, uh, we've won a good victory here. Decisive. They outnumbered us by a couple hundred. 486. We did quite well in the end. Cavalry did super well. 
Dude, look, check out those Rodian Slingers, boys. 250. I can't wait to get like a, a Rodian Slinger Doom stack going. That'd be awesome. Um, but tactically, making them come out against us, that's some really good luck. I think they had the balance of... I think they had the calculation that they had the better army than me. We just beat them on the tactics there. Um, in that defensive formation, because quite often they don't march out like that. If they think they're going to lose, they would stay back in. But if we can try and force land battles as a Hellenic faction, that's what we need to do. Like, our pikes, our hoplites, and cavalry are going to be far better optimized to fight on the field of battle than in a siege. Like, DI, even in, like, Naruto, we're trying to seize and take a city surrounded with hoplites is always a nightmare. And we've actually been attacked here. The fleet is actually going to beat the garrison. Really, that's absurd. The fleet is going to take an absolute battering, but I might actually take that and rebuild it. Because we're going to be able to save the army. Yeah, I just feel like the Nosos captains here have basically just thrown Creed at us. They've basically just thrown all their battle plans out the window. That was terrible pushing us here. Good, and we've also stopped a siege. Oh, we didn't actually lose anyone in its entirety as well. That's good. We'll be able to get some decent replenishment. Um, that's massive loot. I think we might do that instead of straight up occupying. 10,000. We can also just deal with any consequences of a rebellion later on. And we're going to be able to invest that back in roads as well. The only problem is now we do have two settlements in two different provinces, which we're going to need to protect... So we're going to basically need to keep one army in and around roads, and then a navy in quite close range. However, we've got a bunch of range with our fleet. Like, it's not that hard for us to quickly react and pivot to roads or back to Crete with our navy if we need to. We must have some sort of naval buff that does that, to be exact. Anyway, we'll just quickly deal with the remaining stragglers here. So now, we're going to be able to bring Crete into the Rhodes Fold. Now, hopefully we haven't overextended too much. Now we've got to hope for a war between Sparta and Athens, potentially. Uh, Traditions-wise, I think getting... It's basically movement and just making our spears have more melee attack. Because if we ever do need to go into a siege... That's what you're really going to need. Having high attack output. Because being able to surround and siege... With siege towers, battering rams... You need a lot of swordsmen. Like... Rome is like one of the most... Sea, like the most adapt... Factions to do sieges with. You can struggle in DUI if you're, if you're a pike slash hoplite or... Cavalry focused faction in sieges. Because they just get so many advantages. Like, aggressively sieging with an Iberian faction, with Iberian swordsmen or Rome. Like, you're laughing. Even Carthage, to some extent, they can rely on their swordsmen mercenaries. Alright, navy wide as well. Uh, we want to just try and get naval movement. And melee attack and defense. Because what we've used now... Um, with our navy helping us out in the siege. Probably actually won us. If we didn't have the navy, I don't know if we would have won that with just the army. And particularly where we are, we are situated around a lot of cities that have ports. So we're going to be able to essentially use this fleet as a secondary stack. If we ever need to take cities and provinces in Asia Minor. Or in Athens or Pella. Larissa and Sparta don't have ports. But even Epirus does as well to some extent. So, we'll replenish and repair where we can. Uh, we are losing a little bit of food at the moment. But it is winter of 277 BC. We'll consolidate, build up. And then we'll look to make a plan of attack. Um, depending on what happens in Asia Minor. Sometimes they can get wiped out by Pergamon. Or potentially they break their alliance with the Seleucids. Or the Egyptians might attack them. We might be able to make a play in Asia Minor, or we might move into Sparta, have an amphibious landing in the south, or we might have to deal with Athens as well, or maybe even Macedon, I don't know. We'll see how we go. We need to replenish and repair, and, and maybe, yeah, we might be able to be aggressive 
in conquering someone once we build up. Or we might have to react to a potential attack as well. But we've got to defend our new lands. Um, I'm going to actually make another navy to go get some trade. Alright, welcome to the top of the turn. We're slowly but surely replenishing and repairing. Um, we've obviously got a new navy now. So I guess we'll just send them north. I guess we go through... Uh, up through the Dardanelles, through the Bosphorus, and go into the Black Sea. And try and get trade with Thrace. And the various Greek colonies. We've got a grain pit here as well. That's going to help us with food. And we also want to try and get fish as well. Um, I actually... Hmm, it's going to be a while before we can build up. So we'll move my spy to Athens and Sparta to say, But I might actually move my navy westward. Because we might be able to get trade with... Syracuse, Carthage, and Rome, if we're all, all good. Um, but everything at the moment... Public war's not the best, but we're alright. Okay. Yeah, we need trade. We're not making that much per turn. We've got a bit of food now stockpiled. But, yeah, what I'm going to do at the top of the turn now is I'm actually going to send my navy now that it's fully repaired. If we ever get attacked by pirates or... Rebels on the sea, we'll be able to defend ourselves. So we'll move up, we'll try and get trade with Epirus and Rome, potentially. But yeah, we'll sail around and try and get the trade flowing back to Rhodes. So we'll send you here. Might find some barbarians, or potentially the uh, Macedonians. And we found them, they currently occupy Pella. So let's negotiate with the Antigonid dynasty. And let's get trade. And speak. Probably a non-aggression pact because they're quite close. Oh, and they've made Athens their client state, which is huge. Okay, so that's going to complicate things. With a potential war. And there's a Thracian colony here on the future. Site of Constantinople and Istanbul at this time in antiquity. It is just a small fishing village before it becomes the beating heart of the Roman slash Byzantine and, well, I guess Ottoman Empire as well. So we'll send our navies out. You can go eastward while the other one goes west. I don't want to send them too far. Look, I'm not going to send this one to Britain, my main navy. But we'll send them up the Adriatic. We might be able to negotiate with the uh, Venetii, is it? Yeah, whatever the barbarian Venetians are in and around there. And we'll try and... Uh, we might actually have to move you back to Rhodes because we've used most of the manpower and pop here in Greece. We might actually have more back in Rhodes now that we've let it build up a bit. Because I do want to try and get more... Rhodian hoplites in and around our ranks and Rhodian slingers. Okay. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to recruit a secondary army. We're currently two for two within our navy, so we can't get any more. Even though we could use a, a defending home fleet. So we'll get an additional army here. Just to save time. In recruiting... But yeah, at the moment, 600 in the treasury, not much. 300 per turn, it could be better. But yeah, just turtling at the moment. Our spy has officially landed in Greece. The Spartans have a full stack, along with the Athenians. But they are being backed by the Macedonians. I wonder who controls Larissa. Apollonia is under Epirus control. But they do tend to get conquered and smashed by the Romans, depending if they can hold on to Taurus. That would complicate things if the, if Rome moves into the Hellenic world and our sphere of influence. Because fighting Rome, especially earlier on, can be an absolute nightmare if they put their focus on you. We've had a rebellion here. That's the consequences of the looting of Crete. Some of the populace and inhabitants are still unhappy. We're going to be able to quickly resolve that. And we're going to be able to get the XP and money again. So 
look. Although we deliberately cause that a rebellion, essentially. Um, it's not too bad as long as you can manage. Like rebellions aren't overly too bad sometimes. If you, as long as you can't, if you can't manage them, yeah, they're bad. But you can actually farm some XP and coin from them. But it was definitely worth getting that ten thousand gold and bringing it back to Rhodes. We found Thrace here and a Desos. I guess the Desos is like further north. Oh, we found a fair few factions, so we'll get trade with you. At the moment, we're only exporting fish. High fish reserves. Yeah, <laughs> because I guess in our naval economic zone down here, we'd, we'd probably get a bunch of it. And we've also got some barbarians up here. In Sarmatia. The horse lords do have some furs as well. Uh, Rome, wood, glassware, they got so much resources. Okay, so maybe just a trade. And the earlier we get these as well, the better, because then we can basically snowball on the tariffs. So I want to try and focus on getting trade. Some people think it's a little bit cheesy, like going around getting trade with Britain, for example. Like the barbarians and all, it's not realistic. But look, I want my economy to go. Boom. Alright, I've moved my navy back to Crate. I've skipped a little bit ahead. We've got a full stack here now with Cosmas. And we're going to make preparations for an invasion of Greece. Rome has actually taken Epirus, which is huge. And Larissa is under control. We've still got our alliance with the Egyptians. So they're guaranteeing our independence. So we've got a couple of options to make. I don't think pushing into Lydia is going to work because we're going to bring in the Seleucids. And it's a kind of a... We're basically making Egypt go to war with the Seleucids. And you never know, they might not want to be doing that. We're actually making a decent amount of turn money now because we've got a huge trade export evaluation growing. It's currently 1,200. Hopefully it can be a bit more. Uh, we're basically trading with all the Black Sea colonies. So you're going to go head to Sicily, negotiate with Syracuse, and then Carthage, then eventually make your way to Iberia, and then Britannia. So going after Sparta would be a lot harder, and we'd have to navally invade. So we won't have uh, ship support. I think although Athens has the larger garrison and the army, we're going to be able to use our navy. So... I think that's what we're going to have to do. But the only problem is... Is if any other faction comes... Um, like if, like if, if, if they see us... Incredibly... Like if we, if, we let, if we lose too many casualties in Athens... You'd be worried that Sparta or Larissa would, would jump on in. But we're going to be setting sail now. We've got a full stack. It's time to push and try and conquer our third settlement. But if we're successful here today in taking Athens, we could very well make it our new capital. Because it'd be the center of our eventual future empire, hopefully. Okay. So... I've managed to get a military access here with the Egyptians. Well, now they actually might be open to a military alliance. Okay. All right. So if we only we offer them a little bit, that that actually might be worth. Because they were happy for a military alliance. Because our I guess because we've had that defensive for a while now, they're happy for it to grow to a military. Alright, so we're going to negotiate with Carthage here. Just trade. We're not going to be able to squeeze any coin out of them. Uh, Syracuse as well. Let's get some trade. They actually might be more inclined to give us some money as we are a fellow Greek and, of course, Hellenic people. But now we can see what's going on in Egypt. Huge. Alright. So they're not at war with the Seleucids. They might be making preparations for a war against Carthage, potentially. Alright, so, welcome to the top of the turn. Skipped a little bit ahead. It is time for the invasion of Athens. 
So it's actually worked quite well here that my second navy is actually in range. So how we're going to play this one is 17 inside a full stack. We are more than likely outnumbered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trespass and take the diplomatic hit. I'm going to move Cosmas with the full stack far enough away from the garrison inside. And we'll try and do the exact same tactic and situation that we did in Korea. I was just checking if we had like a raid because that, that would make them attack me more so. So Egypt is going to support us. They could even very well send their navy. We'll send you in here as well. And we'll make them make a decision. They're either going to take the casualty hit of being surrounded and us cutting off their supplies and logistics or they're either going to march out against our army that we're kind of vulnerable but we've actually kind of pushed up the peninsula here we're backed into a corner if they attack the navy we stop them recruiting but they're going to come out and attack and they outnumber us so it's another battle here we'll fight this one against the Athenians and we might even be able to take Athens here today if we're lucky so we're actually quite heavily outnumbered to win this one. It's probably 75, 80% in their favor. The Battle of Athens, 275 BC. They probably have better... Yeah, they got more mercenaries than us, actually. Cavalry-wise, we've got the Citizen. They've got more Skirmish Cav than me. But they've got more Hoplites and better quality pipe. They've definitely got the better army. As Rhodes with the fires of Hephaestus. Facing the dreaded demons. This should be a good one. Here we go. Alright, so we have to... Basically destroy this army. Or at least get to a point where if we can... Take as many of them out as possible... The armies, the navies... We'll have an easier time actually taking Athens. Alright, let's form things up. We do have a slight high ground to our right, which is a pretty good advantage. And we've got our cavalry here as well. So let's form them up with four. Alright, here we go. Cosmas of Rhodes. Faction leader and commander in chief. The... Stabilizer of Rhodes, the Conqueror of Crete, and now hopefully the Hero of Athens. Alright, let's start the battle. Let's swing around with our Skirmish Cav. I don't know how effective, honestly, they're going to do in this fight, as we're outnumbered there. The balance of power is actually more in my favor on the battle map. The Order Resolve... Honestly gave us no chance. A decisive defeat. I might actually use some of this high ground to my advantage. So we'll advance slightly. Because at the end of the day, they are attacking me. So we might as well advance slightly. If they can attach an interlock with my front line, we'll swing around with hammer and anvil strikes. So they're sending out a Athenian skirmish unit. We'll try and respond. They're turning as well. So that should be a good hit. Okay. Taking this slight elevation is better than nothing. Just the way they're angling, I don't think I can put the entire army up there. Okay, let's advance. There seems to be a decent amount of skirmish cave here. If we're lucky, we might be able to chase them and capture them. But, obviously, the Rome 1 tutorial says, Chasing after cavalry is uh, skirmish cavalry is fruitless. Sometimes, though, if you can catch them, it's worth. Alright, so we'll hit this unit here. We'll try and surround it by all sides. Our general's under attack. Thank you, Mark Strong. I need to suppress that advice. Alright, we're surrounding them. So, the cavalry are fighting firstly. And we have to watch out for hoplites coming to respond. Alright, let's give charge on them. We're drawing two hoplites out, so we need to move them. <laughs> Looks like the skirmishers want to trade and fight. Alright, so our 
Cretan archers and Rhodian slingers are going to start things off here. We've gone into a quite strong defensive formation. In Phalanx, we've got a shield wall going. Yeah, I don't know if it's we're going to be able to catch them. Oh, the general's there, though. We might be able to use him coming out to our advantage and moving. He's on the move. Swing back in and around, that would be ideal. There we go. Our skirmish. Oh, we caught those those light skirmishes there. We'll commit that and we'll swing in on this. So, we did get caught with a two or uh, two, three volleys. We did manage to catch them. Alright. They have only just engaged us on our left side here. So, our Rhodian hoplites are facing the brave. Athenians here. Another one's coming in. So they're targeting the low ground position, which is quite smart. Alright, we've capitulated those skirmish cap there. So you can swing back around and try and help, as we are trying to get rid of the enemy general. If we can snipe him, that would be awesome. That could cause a huge morale uh, break, if potentially. But at the moment, we're just trading at the moment. But they seem to be taking out more than me, which is unfortunate. Alright, we're maintaining for now. Some cavalry has come back into the fray. So we need to win that cavalry engagement over here. We might need to charge out as well. They're committing a lot of forces on that left-hand side. That's why I'm swinging around some lighter swords to try and wrap around. We've already lost one unit of cavalry here. They're now gone, but the general's here. Mm, they're actually routing. It's annoying that they've wrapped around. But the Rhodian hoplites facing the Athenians. Who is going to win? As both are battling for the heart and soul of Greece. Sparta, Athens, Epirus and Macedon to some extent have not cemented themselves on Greece. Because sometimes as well, yeah. The Spartans can have all of it. Maybe even the Macedonians. Or Athens. Like, the best example... Like, <laughs> Greece? The best way to describe it in Rome Total War and in Rome 2... It's a battle royale, man, between the Greek city-states. All fight each other and one... Finishes out on top. Alright, we've got some units here sitting idly by, so we're going to start... Moving up, moving on, moving out. We're trying to go for their general here, but this cavalry are not doing too well. Hmm. Maybe the Rhodian citizen cavalry. I thought they were better than what they actually are. Oh, they're flanking me around my archers there, which is annoying. Thankfully, I've got too much ammunition left with some of them. Oh, we've actually lost the cavalry engagement here. Oh, that's awful. We've just lost our general. Oh, crap. We might have just lost here. Oh no, because I was only just starting the flanking maneuver now. Ah, oh, far out. Oh no, this is really bad. This could end in a Athenian Pyrrhic victory if we're not careful. Well, make sure no one's like not a like everyone's attacking someone. How are we going to win this one? Or give us our best chance is surrounding. Getting some to sit on phalanx formation in a defensive position and then swinging around to attack. Oh, that's annoying. We didn't even get the RNG of getting the general. They got us before them, so we're basically screwed. It's going to be pretty hard for us to come back from this position. But in saying that, we might be able to inflict such high casualties that we might be able to still win this war. Even though we've lost our faction leader. Potentially. 
Damn it. Cosmas. What have you done, you fool? Cosmas the cooked. The crazy. Did so well in the invasion of Crete. Now we've got a potential succession crisis on his hand. Look, his general unit's gone, but he might be alive, I guess. So he might have retreated. Oh, hang on, hang on. We might better win this. It might be not all doom and gloom. Oh, we won it in the end. Oh my god. That was... Oh my god. How did we do that? Oh my days. I guess we've got the RNG in the end. I guess we've got the air general. Oh my god. That was... Way, way too close for my my liking. Oh my god. That's what well, that's what DEI and, and Rome 2 is about, man. More so Rome, uh, DEI. Oh, close victory. Like, that was make or break. That was our entire economy on the line there. That we funded. That army. 3,000, we lost 1.5. Yeah, they had a bit more than us. They just had more hoplites, man. Our citizen cavalry, 52, 65, that was terrible. Even some of the trash of hoplites did a bit better. But Cosmas, 300 kills with his general's bodyguard, that's pretty good. Let's just cross our fingers and hope that he somehow made it out alive. And didn't get taken out. Alright, so we've destroyed the supporting... Athenian standing army. If we cannot let it get back into Athens, we should have an easier time taking out the city. Um, we're probably not going to be able to get replenishment, obviously, in these lands. So we might have to, just looking at our army, I think it might be beneficial for us to control a merge, everyone up, and then rely on the mercenary pool. Like, we've got the money. We're going to make the money back. It's just, obviously, you guys know, manpower and replenishing in DEI is just so, so harsh. It's easier when you've got a connecting empire, but even when you're island hopping like this, it's very hard. Like, we can't send this army really back to Rhodes to replenish. So, I guess we'll ransom the captives for the money, because we're going to need it for mercs. Because look, we leave a couple, we we leave a couple units go. We're going to be able to get potentially two of our own, and we are now at a a numerical sup, uh, uh, superior position to the Athenians, so it's worth in the end. Barely, but it is. Oh no! Yeah, we lost him. Um, who do we bring on in? Oh, that's annoying. He didn't even have any children, I don't think, either. So we might even have, like, a regency. Like, we didn't have a civil war or something, to be honest. Cosmas. A new faction leader has been declared. So what's exactly happened? Oh, we've got heaps of money now because of the mission. So we've got a new... Uh... Acamus. Acmus is our family leader. How we've got a new faction leader here, a new genus. Okay, so the the family and the faction leader has been split. So it's actually gone to the admiral who was there before. Uh, it's a shame that the faction leader and family leader are one and the same. I guess Rhodes has now split the rule between two dictators, essentially. So we'll merge up and... We're going to be able to get... Look at this. We're going to be able to rely massively on this mercenary pool. Because we want them to be at least full units. Fighting with, like, red health units in DEI is a recipe for disaster. So look at that. We're going to be able to get, like, instant fresh recruits in. And they've also... recruited a secondary army. And then there's the rain remaining stragglers. Oh my god, we're going to have to fight this one again. Thankfully, because we're still sieging... Um, the na the garrisons, oh, yeah, the navy hasn't come in. We're just gonna have to play this one. Well, look, you know what? I've been playing for an hour here. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching the first episode 
of my Rome 2 DEI Roads campaign. We're going to leave it on the cliffhanger here. So although we narrowly won the battle in Athens, this is going to decide if we whether, whether or not we take the city. So, look, we ended here on a cliffhanger. Stay tuned for episode 2 coming out the exact same time tomorrow. And I'm literally going to start that new episode on this battle. So we'll play that and hopefully bring Athens into the Rhodes fold. And then that's three ter ter territories quite early on. We'll be in a really good position. We'll have this like really cool triangulated position of trade and resources flowing from Rhodes, Athens, and to Crete. So if you like the sound of that, leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. Stay tuned for more videos on the channel. Let me know feedback and suggestions, of course. And take care, fellas. I'm going to play the outro now. Goodbye. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C, and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>